the start, isn't it? Okay, so not only am I on time, I'm actually organized. It finally happened. So good morning, everyone. Uh, for those who don't know who I am, my name is Elise and I'm the owner and the artist behind the Painted Brush & Co. Uh, we are located at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk, here in Bendigo, Victoria. Um, I am open today, 10 to 1, but normally we're open Sundays, but tomorrow I'm closed because my five-year-old, or almost five-year-old, is having his fifth birthday tomorrow. So I've decided it's going to be a family day, which is a um, nice part, nice little perk of being my own boss and working for myself. Uh, so I'm open today, 10 to 1, and you can also shop on my website, thepainitbrush.com.au, uh, and everything's in the description all over my page and all over my website as well, so you can find all the information um, regarding what I do and all the products, etc. as well. So, this one's a fun one. I like, I'm, I'm, I really enjoy doing this. Um, this particular technique today. So I wanted to show you Purico's Stain and Glaze. Now, a few weeks ago, I showed you the glaze and I talk about the glaze all the time. Um, uh, sorry, about the stain all the time. I showed you the stain the other day, Timber Stain. Incredible product. One that I absolutely love. It's definitely in my top five. It is our best selling product. I have sold over 300 jars of this and this this was released um, about mid last year. So about 12 months, um, absolutely incredible. 300 jars of any product is amazing. But this product, phenomenal. It's my best seller by far, by a long, long, long shot. It's incredible. So, Pure Eco, for those who aren't familiar, are an Australian brand. Um, they are made in, it's not Sydney, it's near Sydney, New South Wales. I don't know, it's up there. <laughs> I'm not familiar with New South Wales at all. Um, but it's made here in Australia. Incredible team behind the brand. Um, LJ is just amazing. Um, and she knows her products inside and out and she's absolutely incredibly talented with them. Um, so Pure Eco, incredible brand, eco-friendly, all the products, but obviously the wax and the hemp oil, they're all water-based, very easy to use, great for beginners right through to um, experienced artists like myself. Um, so incredibly easy. And I'm gonna say that over and over again today because it really, really is. So Pure Eco Stain and Glaze, is a stain and a glaze in one. So incredible product. The stain is amazing on any timber. Uh, I showed that a few weeks ago. If you hop onto my website, thepainitbrush.com.au, uh, and then go to the stain and glaze listing, you will see quite a few videos that I have linked there showing it. And it's an amazing product. Um, it's absolutely beautiful on timber. So just to show you, this is pine, and this is one coat of each color here on pine. So you can see, so we've got our whisper, driftwood, carob, sepia, sable, storm, and midnight. So incredible colors, really earthy, um, go well with anything. Now, I talk about the stain all the time, Everyone that buys it, I would say about 99% of you are using it because it's a stain um, and you're using it because it's incredible. But I know there's a very small percentage of you that are using it as a glaze, but today I wanted to show you it as a glaze um, and show you how incredible it is because it's really beautiful um, and it's super easy to use and it's a great alternative to using wax. Um, which I know some of you, when, when it comes to this sort of finishing, you're a bit unsure about wax because it's like, mm, what if I don't like it? What if I mess it up? How do I remove it? So glaze is an excellent alternative. It comes in your black, it comes in your white, and then you've got all these brown tones in the middle. Um, so it sort of meets all those needs. Yeah, so waxes, normally you get your whites, you get your blacks, you get your browns. And that's how you create your sort of antique looks, your whitewash looks. But the stain also comes in those. So as a glaze, incredible. 
So on the bottom here, just to show you, this is each of the colors. I'm actually gonna come closer so I'm not speaking over the top of it. And so that I can hold it closer. These are just little um, resin appliques that I have made with, I'm pretty sure it was a re oh, hang on, maybe it wasn't. No, I think it was a redesign with primer um, mold. But these are just resin appliques with that like 10 minute resin. And I painted each of them. So this one's been painted with carbon, which is the same as the frame and is Pure Eco's, and all of these are chalk finish, uh, which is Pure Eco's black. So this is carbon with whisper, just one coat, just to show you. So the glaze works by sinking in and adding depth and dimension. And it also helps to highlight as well. So this is whisper. This is driftwood. Which, it's, it's definitely a brown, but over a white, I found it looked quite grey. Uh, carob. So this is your um, brown. I would, if you're looking for a sort of a mid-tone brown, I would go for your carob. Uh, then we have sepia, which is a little bit brighter than the carob. Not a lot. But there's the two next to each other. Then we go darker, and this is sable. Now, this is quite dark. It is a very dark, very um, very chocolatey brown. Now, if you want to go for grey, we've got storm. And then, oh, last but not least, we've got midnight, which is what we're using today. So midnight's black, yeah? Now, all of these... Oh, I just moved my counter. Um, all of these are water-based they can all be mixed together um, so if you want to create your own custom color you absolutely can um, and they also um, they can be layered okay so they're all compatible with each other you can layer them etc you can apply these over chalk finish and silk finish uh, chalk finish is our chalk paint silk finish is our all-in-one mineral paint so you can apply them over both if you want to um, there's nothing stopping you from doing it over both. These bowels, which we're about to do, are painted with Pure Eco's chalk finish in the colour Cloud, which is our, it's our white, but it's a grey white. Um, and I think within the range, so on my shelf, I'll show you the three colours. That one, that one, and that one. So on my shelf, when I have them sitting there, and I think I've, I might need to update the website again, but on the website, it's sort of like that too. So we've got snow. Oh, hang on. Let me turn them upside down. It shows them a bit better. Kind of. <laughs> All right. So we've got snow, cotton, which has got a slight yellow tinge. Then we go in with cloud. So cloud on top. So cloud's got a slight gray base to it. And then just to show you, this is then macadamia, which is my next white on my shelf. So it's still quite grey based, but it's a lot darker. So we've got snow down here. This one here is cotton up top. That's cloud. And this is macadamia. Okay. So there are white. So today I've used cloud. Now I painted these two, three weeks ago. Oh, dropping things. <laughs> Everything's falling down. Um, so I painted these about three weeks ago. You absolutely do not have to wait any more than dry time um, before you apply the glaze. You can apply it within dry times anywhere from 30 minutes to four hours. So you can absolutely apply it sort of as soon as it's dry. Um, you do want to make sure it's 100% dry, otherwise your paint's going to come off. But um, you don't have to wait any miracle amount of time. Just make sure your paint's dry before you apply it. But I did this about three weeks ago, and um, I've had this live planned since then. Um, but I had a few other things to do first. So all that I wanted to show you first before we got to this. Um, so we're finally doing it today. So these are, just to show you, shiny orange bells. The, um, can I take that out, I wonder? I can hang up. I'm just going to chop this bell out because it's going to ring the entire time. Um, there we go. So these are just, they're plastic. They're this chintzy gold. Um, I got them from the reject shop. They're actually not too bad. They're like a molded plastic. Um, 
These came from the reject shop. They were, it was a set of two and they were definitely under $10. I think they were like seven or $8. So they weren't a lot, um, but I got them because one, I love huge bells. I love any sort of Christmas bells. Um, yeah, <laughs> I just really like bells. There's just something about them. But I got them because they've got this detail on them, which I think is really, really pretty. And I thought it would be a great way um, to show you the glaze and to, we'll see how we go, maybe even show you another product as well. Um, but more importantly, I wanted to show you the glaze. So I thought this was a really great option. So typically you would use glaze on things like this that have got lots of detail. If you have got a flat surface, you absolutely can. I have in the past, it's still, it can still add a lot of depth and dimension, but you're not going to get the full effect of the, of the glaze like you would over something like this. Let me just hold that, bo that bowl in place. So this is one coat of the glaze. I did post a very quick, short video. I think it was like 16 seconds um because i popped it up on my tiktok the other day but super effective you can see the glaze has sunk into all those little nooks and crannies so i'm going to show you how to apply it so today we're using the ooh, we're using midnight which is the black and you want to grab a brush any brush will do um i like to use one that's a little bit rounded and has, and is a little bit smaller for when I'm working on detail. I find the really big brushes just don't get, don't get the glaze in there as much. So I'm using this one. This is our yellow 25. You can find them on my website. They're like, I can't see the prices from here. I look like, I look over there like I can. Um, I think they're like five or $10. They're not much. Um, these brushes, I love for doing this sort of work. Um, they're quick, they're easy, they're really quick and easy to clean as well. Uh, and because the products are water-based, super quick. But I like these, I like the length of the bristles. And I find the smaller brushes definitely get into all the detail a lot easier. Now, you're going to need, make sure you're fully prepared before you start. Once you start, you'll see how quickly it does dry. Um, and I'm gonna help you with that as well. Grab yourself a chucks cloth or some sort of rag. Um, whatever you're using, you will throw in the bin at the end of it um, because you're using this to wipe off all the excess product. They will get, my one the other day was disgusting by the end of it, in my hands were gross. Um, you're going to throw it away. So whatever you're using to wipe it down with, be prepared to throw it in the bin. Um, unfortunately, it's just part of it. I wish we didn't have to, but really by the end of it, the cloth that you're using isn't salvageable. So just keep that in mind. You also want to make sure that you have some form of spray bottle. I highly recommend these spray misters. They give you heaps of control with your water. Um, so I can stop spraying at any point and they'll stop, whereas a traditional spray bottle, it just keeps going. Um, I absolutely love these. They are, how much are they? I think they're like 10 or $12. They're not heaps, um, but this one, it, they just go and go and go. They're not something that's like a once off purchase. Sorry, they're a once off purchase. They're not something that you have to keep purchasing. Um, absolutely brilliant. I use mine all the time. Um, I love them. So you need that, you need your glaze, obviously, a cloth, a brush, and the item that you're going to glaze. So make sure you always give your pot a good shake or a good stir. Oh, I'm using a little sample pot that Pure Eco sent me. Um, not, I'm not using from a big jar today. I've still got heaps left in this one. So I'm going to use this today just so that you're not confused and you know what I'm doing. So be prepared if you have, I had freshly painted nails the other day. I never paint my nails. And of course the day that I had, a, had them freshly painted was the day I did this on the other bell the other day. But if you have a nice manicure, or freshly painted nails, wear gloves, because even now I've still got it stuck in my cuticles and all over my fingers. Um, so don't do this with nice nails. Make sure you're wearing gloves. Um, and actually I am going to take these off. I've just had my wedding and engagement ring cleaned. They are shiny and sparkly. So I'm gonna take them off because I don't want glaze in them. It is water-based. 
but it gets stuck. Um, I find that it really sinks into my fingers quite a lot. And I find this is messier than staining a piece of timber as well. So, we've got our bell. Now, I'll just show you. We've sort of got, hang on, where's the better side? These two here. We've kind of got sections. There's like a line there and a line there where it joins. So I like to sort of work in one section at a time. Again, my favorite word, you have to work methodically. You do need to work fairly quickly. Um, over the chalk paint, you will find in particular, the glaze really sinks into the paint and grabs hold of it. Um, and that's when we come in with our water bottle. Um, and it is, you can wet it and it will keep moving, but you do need to work fairly quickly. If you are working over silk finish, yes, it still dries quite quickly, but it's not sinking in like it does over the chalk. So you have a little bit more wiggle room. The chalk, you do need to work quickly, but let's go. So you don't need stacks and stacks of product. That's quite a lot. But as always, I like to load up my brush a little bit. You don't want heaps. And I'm gonna see, hang on. I just wanna bring you in a little bit closer if I can. Let me, oops, hang on, which one do I want? This one, sorry, I apologize. I'm moving the camera on you. Let me bring you in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Right, so we're gonna do a section. All right, this has had two coats of the chalk paint too. I don't know if I mentioned that. So, and just put a bit of paper or cardboard down as well if you're working on something small. So all you're gonna do is you're going to paint it on just like you would paint, really. You're going to work on getting that stain into all of those nooks and crannies as best you can. Um, you want to, if it's not in there, you're not going to get the full effect. So you want to be, you can be a little bit generous because you are going to be wiping off the excess, but you do really want to get it into those nooks and crannies because at the end of the day, that's where it's going to stay uh, the most and that's the detailing that you want to be highlighted. Okay, so just a section. I like to do a section at a time rather than doing sort of the whole thing. You can do the whole thing if you wanted to. This is only small. Um, you definitely could, but I find for me personally, working in small sections at a time definitely makes life that little bit easier. Okay. All right, so we'll just do the top as well. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to walk away and just let this completely dry or anything like that you do want to be doing this sort of all in one go. All right, so get it on there. Make sure you sort of haven't missed any bits. I know some detail can be really hard to get into. That's why I like to use a smaller brush. But once it's on there, so that's what we're sitting like at the moment. This is what it was. That's what it is now, just like that, it's all over my hand. Now you're gonna grab yourself a cloth. Now, this is wet, we've just applied it. I'm gonna take my cloth first and I like to sort of fold it a little bit. It gives me a bit more um, control. I'm just gonna sit that there. You're going to wipe over that surface first. So I like to wipe it first and then go in with my water. This just, I find I get a little bit more control from it and it also allows me to move, remove that very top layer as well. So you're just gonna sort of wipe all over. So I know you can't see a huge difference on the camera. I can see it in person, but you just wanna really rub that off. Okay. So I don't know how well you can see that, but I've just really wiped off the excess. So now what I'm gonna do that starts to dry, it sinks in, it dries. Take your water bottle, give it a good spray. You can spray your cloth as well. Using a damp cloth can help these cloths uh, dry. And by wetting it, you're reactivating it. And then you can do that. And now you can remove a little bit more. So I'll just sort of go down one side. 
You see that difference? So this is just with the um, rubbing straight after it was um, applied and now with the water. So it just makes the water just makes a massive difference and really lets you wipe that excess off. So let me do the other side. It's just super, super, super easy to do. Okay, so that's with the initial rubbing. And just to show you comparison, oh, hang on, my camera's not big enough to show both. So this is what I got it to the other day. This is where we're at at the moment. So we'll keep going. I do want them to match, obviously, so we're gonna keep going. So just keep sort of rotating your cloth as well. You can see it's just so much comes off. All right, so just keep rubbing it. So this is sunk down into all of those little grooves. And again, by wetting it, I'm taking off another layer. You can leave it darker in some spots as well. You definitely don't have to do sort of the same level all over it. Yeah, this is, I don't know if you can see, can you see that texture in there as well? So it's got heaps of texture on this one. It's not just the raised detailing. So I'm getting so many notifications. Just like that. So this is Pure Eco Stain and Glaze. This is water-based, so it's going to come off my hands. No worries, you don't have to worry about that. All right, so I'm gonna leave that bit for a minute, let it dry a little bit, and let's do the other side. And then I like to sort of go over the whole thing as a whole, and I find that way it just removes and makes it a little bit more even as well. So again, just wipe it on. It doesn't matter if it goes over that edge where I already was. I'm trying to make sure it's on camera for you so you can see what I'm doing. Just like that. Make sure you get it all into those little grooves. Super, super easy to apply. You can use any of the coloured state uh, glazes to do this. Stain and glaze is what they're called. I keep calling them the wrong one. Um, stain and glaze is what it's called, Pure Eco. Um, and you can use any of the colours. But I always enjoy using the black over the white. I just think it's so dramatic. And I think it's really, really beautiful. So, wet, just to show you, that's where we're at for the other one. This is where we're at now. Take your cloth again, straight after you've applied it, wipe off that initial excess. If you've just come on or you've missed some of it, this is, this will, I will upload this to my YouTube channel as well. It makes it a little bit easier to find it later on. And then I'll also add it to my website as well for you to find. And you'll just find it underneath the stain and glaze listing. All right, so that's where we're at. So spray it again with our water bottle. You can see just that huge difference with that little bit of water on there makes. And you can see a little bit darker, but it will match up that side again. And this is why I sort of do a section and then go all over it nice and evenly as well. so beautiful these. I really, really like them. 
So just like that, all over. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm happy to help. All right, so a little bit more rubbing there. So this was the first side we did. This is where we're at. So this is a little bit lighter still. So spray it again. I'm just gonna start using my new cloth because that one's starting to get a bit too wet. Super, super easy. If you're keen to come in and see these in person, I am open today at 10 to one uh, at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk. So you are welcome to come in. I'll have them out on display for you so you can see the results in person. All right, so we're about even now. Let's do the last two sides. I'm just gonna apply it all over the two sides. Because you're wetting it, you've got so much more control. So it's not, this, this really isn't a large surface. If it was really big, then I would definitely do a section at a time rather than doing the whole area. So again, just making sure you get it into all those nooks and those crannies. So, and it doesn't matter what way you move your brush either, um, because at the end of it, you're not gonna have brush strokes. So it really, you can just sort of go for it. Make sure I get all that top section there. All right, so we're just going to apply it all over. Do this other bit as well. And you can apply as much or as little as you like as well. Now, because this is a water-based product, if you decide that you don't like it, you can just go straight in and paint straight over the top. You don't need to do anything special at all. You don't need to remove it. You can just paint straight over the top. Um, whereas if you were do using a wax to do this, you would need to remove that wax if you really didn't like it and you wanted to paint over it. Um, unfortunately, that's just, it's one of the downsides with wax. Actually, it's really the only downside <laughs> um, for me personally, uh, is that you would have to remove a wax. Whereas this, you can just paint straight over the top of it and it doesn't matter and then you start all over again. So it's a great option if it's something that you're not 100% sure about. It does dry matte and it has got a built-in top coat as well. Um, so if, you're, if you like the finish of it and you've done it all over like I have, you absolutely don't then need to go in and apply any more um, sealers to it, unless you wanted to. You could then apply a wax over it as well if you wanted to. Um, you can apply hemp oil over it or any of the top coats, um, or sealers rather, but you absolutely don't need to. It has got that built-in top coat and it is very durable by itself. And because it works by sinking in, into the chalk paint in particular, it's definitely got a lot of durability too. So we're just wetting it and removing that excess. So that's where we're sort of at. This is where the other two sides are. This is where we're at so far. And this side I haven't touched at all. All right, so that's our three stages. So this is where we get to. This is where we're at and this is where we haven't touched. So we're just wiping off the excess. I'm just using my heavily used one for that initial sort of wipe down, just to get rid of some of it. Okay, and then we take our water bottle, give it a good spray, grab my other cloth that's not so heavily used, just like that. 
Now, as you can see, my nails and my hands are getting really, really dirty. So <laughs> definitely wear gloves if you've got your nails just done. I'd hate for you to waste all that money <laughs> or use all that money to do them and then have them absolutely wasted because you go to do this. So just like that. Nope, don't forget the top. So we're looking pretty even now. This one's still got a fair bit in there, so we'll just sort of even it out. I just want to get it all fairly even and then we'll go over it for that sort of final wipe. Because I do want it a little bit lighter still. Looking pretty even, that top bit there is a little bit dark for me still. I'm not too fussed on it being like 100% even, but I do want it pretty close. I'm a little bit crazy about things like this. If it's not 100% even, I will notice it. I will notice every little detail like that. So I do like to make it fairly close. Okay, so this is where we're at. This is where the other one is. How can I hold them like that? So we're getting closer. So this one, now that we've got it all over, I'm gonna spray it really well. We're gonna take our cloth and we're really going to wipe it back a lot more. This time, I'm looking to get more of this white detailing coming through. I don't want it all 100%, but I definitely want a lot more. And this, doing this little bit, going this little bit further, is really going to make the difference. So, I'm just gonna spray it all over, which is gonna help it move. Now, some of my, I don't know if you can see it, some of my paint's coming off just a little bit, that's fine, it's not an issue for me. And it's got some of that gold underneath coming through. Um, it can happen, roll with it. If you don't like it, again, you can paint over it. So I'm just going to continue wiping it and really focusing on those raised sections. literally just wiping away that excess product so that you end up with this beautiful finish. So if you find it's not really moving, wet the surface a little bit. It will just help it move that little bit more. See how that white's really lifting it now? that little bit more coming through. It's just, it's making such a big difference. See how just taking that back, that little bit more, has just helped lift it that little bit and pull it away from those darker undertones. So you can go as much as you like. You can really keep rubbing this back if you want to, to highlight more of that detail. But I'm really liking where it's at. 
So it's a little bit different. We're still not quite as even as this other one. I could definitely go that little bit further. They don't have to be perfectly matching, but I'm a bit fussy. So just go that little bit more. And this is all you're doing. So the stain and glaze, as the, gla as the stain, super easy to apply over your timber, but as a glaze over paint, it is an incredible sealer and it's so amazing for creating this detail and to help lift the detail. You saw how flat it was. So it's really just given a lot of definition. How beautiful is that? So super, super easy, pure eco stain and glaze. It is water-based. My hands are covered in it. Hot soapy water or warm soapy water. We'll get it out. Same with your brush, warm soapy water, and it'll wash right out. So 